Bob is really spoiling me here. I'm not having to conserve water at all. Three cups of coffee again. If you're wondering why I wasn't quite as chatty on the video yesterday, that tends to be what happens when uh, things were hurting. <laughs> I, I was enjoying myself. I was enjoying the views. I was enjoying my books, but uh, it's just hard to kind of like lose yourself. And yeah, Hiker's End doesn't uh, hit when things hurt every step. But is what is. I am doing what I can. I am doing all these tendon stretches. I am resting my foot. That's why I didn't make quite as many miles yesterday as I normally would. My face was a little lower. But I can manage like this. I can see the snowy peaks up there. I'm going to get up to about 8,000 feet. I don't think I'm going to get up high enough where I'm going to have to worry about that. At least not yet. I did make the decision to leave my slightly chewed flip-flops behind. I do miss them when I get in the tent. It's not that big a deal to uh, pull on the shoes. If I just walk barefoot, I track crap into the tent. Problem is, I have had scorpions get into my shoes before, so I always have to check them every time I'm going to go out and pee, and that is sometimes hard when you're half asleep in the middle of the night. Those flip-flops have been on the verge of failure ever since they got chewed up by that critter. <laughs> uh, let's see, what was that? A little ball after Denver. Like I said, I miss them, but I was primarily using them in hotels, and there's not going to be that many hotels, so I figured, eh, not worth the uh, hassle of having to take them in and out since I store them on the top of the pack. Okay, I have drank as much as I can manage in the cold. I returned the bottle to the cache, and now it's time to get going. Water carries are going to be a little bit easier, looks like. It is always kind of depressing how quickly things change when I'm forced to be inactive and off trail for even a couple of weeks. My glutes, my big leg muscles, those are all fine, but I'm feeling my shoulders and my uh, ankles slash lower calves. Doesn't help that I uh, seem to have this habit of getting older every year I come back out here. Things do kind of settle though after a couple of days. So I expect after today the kind of sore ankle bit will probably start to fade. I'll be over the hump. The foot thing is an injury, so who knows? I'm trying to manage it as well as I can. Your guess is as good as mine there. Tendon stuff tends to be kind of stubborn. At least the rib is basically just a dull ache right now. I had a hell of a time for those first two weeks or so, mostly because it was uh, making my sleep less restive. I move around in my sleep quite a bit, as Jen can attest with some amount of chagrin. Oh man, I do love the big cliff faces out here. <laughs> Certainly feeling Utah. -y. When you have a rib, any movement that moves that area tends to hurt. So I'm hurting myself in my sleep. I don't rest as well. And then when I wake up, it's just kind of sore and unpleasant. Now, I feel it getting up and getting into the tent, but it's just kind of a, a dull ache. If it had been that to begin with, I never would have left trail. It was mostly when I hit that second day, the day I came off trail, and every step just walking like this was a big jolt. I was like, yeah, okay, this is a problem. And while it might seem like I jumped the gun on stuff like that or the uh, calf tear in Abiquiu, when you're out here in remote areas, stuff doesn't happen when you uh, snap your fingers. It takes planning to get in and out, and often it requires help from other people. If I had continued for another day or two, I could have got into an area like this, which was more remote, harder to get to. Bob would have still picked me up in you know, ADT Trail Angel Extraordinaire, but it would have been impossible to uh, get dropped back on a place like this. My parents aren't really up for four-wheel drive roads. I have a tendency to rail against the universe for anything holding me back and then just kind of get on with it and do what I have to do. Still frustrated, but I try not to dwell on it too much. Pretty sure I've mentioned this before, but one of the advantages that came out of not being a first timer out here is I was less upset and panicked when something went really wrong. My first time on the PCT, I felt horrible when my Achilles started bothering me. 
around mile 500. That's a really stubborn one also and notorious for taking people off the trail. And here I was, I'd sacrificed everything. I was ready to do this. I had worked through all those initial couple hundred miles, which tend to be rough. And it felt like I was gonna get yanked off trail. Same thing up in Washington. I was in the last 250 miles and just having a hell of a time with pack rash and arch abrasion. And felt like I was so close, but I was afraid I wasn't gonna make it. So these days I still get really bothered by that stuff, but there's more of an awareness of, okay, yeah, stuff happens. You work through it and unless it's something really, really, really severe, you can usually work through it while moving. So the goal today, try and step up my mileage again, just a bit. There is a cache in about 22 miles. Some of my mileage estimates are uh, estimates from when I initially went through here, so they can be a mile or two off, but that'll let me get water at the end of the day, which is nice and means I don't have to worry about uh, carrying quite as much. Because like here, 15 mile water carry, no big deal whatsoever. I've got probably three liters and change on me. But if I have to get through the evening, where I need water to cook my rice and beans and water for coffee and water to drink if I wake up thirsty in the middle of the night. That uh, tends to require a lot more planning and buffer. I could not cook the rice and beans, just eat bars and uh, skip coffee in the morning, but that both of those are huge kind of psychological boons out here. And I think that's part of why I'm able to keep going over longer periods out here. Cause you see people all the time just burn out, get tired of it. The other advantage I have granted <clears throat> is that I don't really have a home to go back to. So it's not like I have a uh, comfy bed, couch, etc., waiting for me. If I'd been forced off trail and had to go back to SoCal, I would have been hopping between uh, campgrounds for, you know, two months before we had anything set. The other funny thing as far as adjusting on and off trail that I've noticed, when you're out here and you're used to not bathing for, you know, a week or two in a, in a go, your uh, sensitivity to your own smell goes way down. When I'm back in civilization, I notice that kind of resets. So I notice how much I stink for a little while. And then you just kind of get used to it again. Sadly, I find I still notice the uh, stink of my tent partner more than my own, despite the fact I'm pretty sure I am a smellier person than Jen, maybe. So this entire time I have been pretty much 100% in Moab field, field office BLM land. Now I am going into National Forest to uh, cross through LaSalle to get over to Moab. In this case, other than the shading on the map being a little different, there is no real effective difference. Sometimes though, for example, in however many days I'm gonna be crossing through Canyonlands, and there I need to have a permit. I do do my best to pay attention to the rules of any given area. They often don't have them posted, and they can sometimes be inconsistent, and I tend to be living in the gray area anywhere, so anyway, since most of the states I've gone through have been the vast majority. They don't really want you camping where I was camping. You know, it's called stealth camping for a reason. Here, since it's the same sort of desert terrain, the National Forest and the BLM seem to pretty much be in line. You know, they don't want you going off trail because then you're going to crunch this stuff, the cryptobiotic. And again, it is delicate and takes a long time to form and causes a lot of uh, wind erosion damage if it's not there. So that's why I have been staying in more established spots and not just, you know, crawling off into the vegetation at night, which is my preference because these spots haven't been that bad, but a lot of times the well-established car camps, the problem is 
there's been a lot of trash. You know, people try and burn trash in the fire pit. It doesn't fully clean that up. They slop stuff around. They leave little bits of food trash and other things. And then you end up with a bunch of uh, really brave critters all around. I do store my food in my tent. I make sure it is inside of something so there is nothing that looks or smells like food pressed against the outside because in my experience that's when you get rodents chewing through as long as my food bag and everything is inside my pack inside my tent I've never had any real issue but part of that is I'm selective about where I camp because if it's a busy enough campsite you're just screwed we had a mouse invasion in the van one year and there wasn't anything we were doing. Everything was well stored. It was just an area where they had been getting food from a lot of other people and they were brave trying to scavenge. That's why I always try to explain to people who are planning to go out and do the AT and then they're terrified of bears. It seems like there's a psychological thing where a certain sort of somebody wants to camp at the shelters because they feel like safety in numbers, you'll have less issues with bears when it's the opposite. The bears are gonna be around those because there's a lot of people, not everybody's gonna be careful, they're gonna leave food out. They're just going to end up with bits of food scattered around and I mean, there's a reason why like Cosby Knob gets closed every year. So yeah, if you wanna see a bear, absolutely camp at the shelter. <laughs> Yeah, this has to be mountain bike water sources or something. That's the first flowing water I've seen. I seem to be having a hell of a time. Stopped for a good while, stretched. Enjoyed the views, but no luck. I am going to uh, keep on keeping on, but... I am at least considering slowing down a bit and pushing Moab out a day. Only problem with that is I'm butting up against the weekend. So if I do my original plan, I'm there Thursday night. If I do my other plan, I'm there Friday night. Sometimes hotels can get stupid expensive on weekends. I think that's that valley I came through yesterday before climbing up uh, that canyon. Hey, mystery roadside water. I have a cache up ahead, but two streams in a day. And, yeah. Okay, a little after five o'clock. I basically topped off my entire gallon. I'm gonna camp between caches. The next one is five-ish miles away, but I gotta climb a hill and I'm pretty sure my foot's not gonna hold up to uh, too long of a day today. I have a tendency to get highly frustrated and go, oh, I need to do this, I need to do this. The reality is most of the time I want to be doing XYZ. I wanted to be doing, you know, 22 plus miles today and get to that other cache. I have some time to play with. I mean, since I'm not trying to make it to the beach in San Francisco this year, the real thing that matters is 
if my feet are going to improve over where they are right now, which this is going to be a long couple of weeks if they're exactly like this. I need to be ready for the long carries. This is a four-day carry into Moab. I can stretch that. Moab to Needles is three days. I can stretch that. I can get some extra fuel. I can throw in an extra dinner, stuff like that. It's the Needles to Hanksville, Hanksville on where I really need to be firing on more cylinders than I am now. Okay, so I'm back in uh, National Forest Land. There was a little bit of private property back there. I'm not sure where I'm gonna stop. Obviously, I gotta get off the slope. Harder than you think to uh, set something up up there. So we'll see what the saddle's like. My feet seem to be doing better at the end of the day. Maybe it's just the pack I know I'm about to get to stop. Eventually. Been a little sparse as far as campsites here. Well, hell, <laughs> I was gonna stop, but uh, everything's sloped, everything's burned. This might be one of them uh, problematic nights here. Incidentally, the other cache is up on that ridge line over there. I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to find a spot before that. Okay, I had just gotten to that uh, time of night where it's dark, headlamps out. I had a hunter stop, asked me if I needed a ride, and then was just blown away when I said what I was doing and mentioned that there is a campsite down here. So I wouldn't have seen it if uh, she hadn't said anything. Hopefully no one's here, and hopefully there is some uh, flat ground. Okay, and she did point me at a uh, campsite. It is a little on the uh, tilted side though. Okay, you know what? The camping's just been so awesome lately. I'm kind of spoiled, so I've been a, a bit reluctant, but I can make this work. Not great, but possible. <laughs> this is like a flashback to one of the camps off Grand Mesa. Oh well. Home sweet home.